Hello everyone and welcome to our first RPG Maker MZ tutorial. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can start a new project, what is a tile set, how to create a map, and what are the tools that are available to you to draw that map. So let's get started. So now you've just launched your RPG Maker MZ tool for the first time. Awesome. Now the first thing I want you to do is go on the top of your screen under the tools tab and click on options. Now what it's gonna allow us to do is, personally what it's gonna allow me to do is change what is called the UI team, which is basically the grayish color that you're seeing on your screen, which I'm personally not really fond of. So if I go over here and click on dark team, then apply, you will see that it is a lot more smoother for your eyes and much more pleasant to look at. Personally, it is for me, you might be more fond of the default team um, it's really up to your personal preferences. I much rather work with a dark team, so that's what I'm gonna change first. All right, moving on. So now I'm gonna show you how you can create a new project. It's very simple. All you have to do is click on the little icon at the top left of your screen, which says new project. So now you click on this, you will be asked for three little information, the name, the game title, and the location. So the name is basically the name of the folder, which is going to contain all the data and informations related to your game. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this RPG Game Maker Project, which is the project I'm going to use for all my future tutorials. The game title, it's important to remember that you can change this without any inconvenience at any point. So it's really, it's really not important what you input there right now. If you don't have the perfect title for your game yet, just input whatever you would like. You can always change it later. Now the location. It's basically where the folder you just created is gonna be stored inside your computer. Now the default path is usually documents under the RMMC folder. And it honestly, it's quite a good spot for it. So just leave it there because if you change the location, you're most likely to forget where you stored the project in the future. And when you will need to reopen it for whatever reason, you won't remember where you stored it. So do yourself a favor right now. Do not touch this and just click OK. Now it's going to copy all the files you need for redeem, which was all your graphics, database, images and whatnot. Everything that is automatically provided by RPG Major. So you probably realize that the editor already created a map by default, which is called Map001. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can create new maps on top of this. So at the bottom left corner of your screen, if you right click on the game title you created and select the new option, it will bring up a brand new menu which is called Map Properties. This contains all the properties and configurations for the map that you are about to create. As you can see, there is a lot of properties. We're not going to cover all of this for today. We're simply going to stick to the basics you will need to create your maps, and we will review all the rest in future tutorials. So the first property you will always want to change when creating a new map is definitely the name. Otherwise, it will become a nightmare for you to be able to identify your maps when you will have over 50 different created and the whole name after numbers. In this case, today what I'm going to show you how to do is a world map, so this is exactly the name I'm going to give it. World map. Now the second property is called display name. This is actually the name inside the game that the players will be able to see. Now remember that this is entirely optional, so if you leave the display name blank, the map inside the game won't have any name. Now the third property I want to talk about is the tile set. So what exactly is a tile set? A tile set is a combination of graphic sheets which you pick from that will provide the graphics for your map. So essentially that's the graphics. Now as you can see there is only six tile sets available by default with RPG Maker MZ, but you can create a lot more. I will show you how to do this in another tutorial. Now since what we want to do today is create a world map, I will select the overworld tile set which will provide me the graphics that I need. Now for the two remaining properties I want to cover today, they're pretty much self-explanatory. It is the width and the height of the map. So it's basically it's the horizontal size and the vertical size of the map. 
uh, for warm up today i'm gonna pick a width and a height of 20. i feel like that's a good number and then once all my settings are complete and filled in i will just press ok and as you can see my map has been created so now it's time for the fun part which is actually creating the map the first thing you want to do is make sure that you click on the map button at the top of your bar right over here in order to unlock the drawing mode this will also unlock the tile set that we just discussed about which contains all the graphics for our world map now something i also want to adjust is the zoom on our map as you can see we're only using 75 percent rather than 100 percent of our zoom so it's a little bit too far away from my personal taste so i'm just gonna zoom in a little bit up to 100 percent you can also uh, use the one-on-one -on -one ratio button right over here to do it quicker to always go back to 100 no matter where you actually are so now that i'm in 100 percent feel like it's a better ratio but i'm not entirely sure of the size of the map anymore as you can see i cannot see the whole size of it inside one picture which i don't know i'm not really a fan of uh, especially since i don't want to make too much of a big map for today so i feel like i'm just gonna edit the map a little bit and i'm gonna make it a tad more smaller uh, with the height so let's try something like 14 okay there we go so that's much better so this is what i'm gonna work with so now i'm gonna introduce you to the tools you're gonna need in order to draw your maps the first one is probably the one you're gonna use the most which is the pencil so the pencil all you need to do is select it then go on your tile set over here you can switch tabs by clicking the buttons over here at the bottom i'm gonna select one asset i'd like to draw let's pick this tree over here and then all i need to do is click on the map and there you go my tree is drawn you can do it over and over again also it's important to note that if i hold the left mouse button and i drag my mouse the tree will be drawn wherever I draw the cursor, which is pretty good. Now, the second tool I'm going to show you is actually the undo button available right over here. So as you might have guessed, all you need to do is click on it to undo the previous action you already did. Now, two other tools that I want to show to you are the rectangle and the eclipse. So if I select the rectangle, always using the same exact tree, and I click on the map, then the tree gets drawn as if I was using a pencil except that if I hold the left mouse button and drag my mouse then a rectangle gets drawn the eclipse works the exact same way now another tool that you may be familiar with if you ever used photoshop is what RPG Maker likes to call the flood field but can also be referred as the bucket so if i click on it and i come inside my tail set to select some grass right over here and i click inside the map as you may probably have guessed it will fill all those sections except for the tree which were already filled with something else so i can also come and override those trees and so as you may have guessed it will always override any selection of the same item so for example, if I was to draw a couple of trees right over here, pick the bucket, then let's say I select the pyramid instead and click on those trees, then pyramids has been added inside all the trees that were previously drawn. Also, I could reselect the same exact grass that I previously used and click inside those pyramids I just drawn. And there you go, they have been filled with the exact same grasses around, so they kind of disappear. Now, another cool tool that I want to introduce to you is the shadow pen, which can draw or remove shadow. So an example on how I would like to use this is, for instance, if I was to draw this tower over here, and I felt like mm, this sh should be some kind of shadow over there next to the tower since it's pretty big. So something I can do is pick the shadow pen right there and come over here and draw the shadow that I feel like this tower should be casting. So now something that I would like to discuss a little bit more in depth about is the new feature of RPG Maker MZ, that is the layers. So if you go at the top of your screen over here on your bar and click on layer, 
you will be able to see that you are currently in automatic mode that you also have layer one two three and four so what exactly is this well let me explain so far we've been working with the automatic layer mode which means that we let rpg maker decide on which layer it draws the things that we're putting on our map as you can see we only have grass on our map and so it probably drew it on the layer one so if i click on layer one you can notice absolutely no change whatsoever if i click on layer two you can see that layer two seems kind of empty same goes for three and same goes for four that's because the only grass that we have on our map is actually all on layer one now if i was to draw for instance let's say this tower over here on the layer one as you can see the grass disappears and only the tower remains that's because we're drawing the tower on the exact same layer as the grass and not above the grass and so this is the result that the the tower doesn't appear to be on the grass but actually deletes the grass and to be there instead so if we wanted the tower to look like it was on the grass we would have to work with a layer which is above the layer on which the grass is so something above the layer one so let's say for instance i pick the layer three which is two layers above the layer of the grass and i was to try to draw the exact same tower if i go back on the automatic mode as you can see the tower seems like it's on the grass rather than taking its place that's because we're drawing a layer above the layer of the grass instead of on the same exact layer so what layer does actually is it gives you manual control on where exactly you wish to put things rather than letting the engine decide where it should put it so what exactly is the use behind this well let me give you an example if i was to work on automatic mode and try to draw this castle over here let me zoom a little bit on it so we have a little castle over there and then i realize hmm, i'd like to have this village right underneath the castle edge right over there if i was to try to draw it in it uh, still on automatic mode as you can see it draws over the castle but i actually want it to be under the castle now there's two ways that i can solve this i can first go inside layers find the layer on which the tassel is so the tassel seems to be on layer four so if i pick a layer below the layer four and i draw the village over here then technically we're drawing the village under the tassel so if i come back to automatic as you can see the village been drawn under the tassel instead of over the tassel now that is one way of fixing things another way will simply be to draw the actual village and then come back and get back the exact same asset of the tassel and draw once again over the village in that case then the exact same thing occurs the village is under the tassel so that's it that's what the layers does it gives you the control over the engine on how it should actually shows things on your map all right so these were all the tools that you need to be aware of in order to create your maps so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a little world map with what i have here and i'm gonna show you how you can test that map once it's finished so bear with me a little minute here All right, so now that I'm done with this little world map that I'm gonna use for our future tutorials, first, what I want you to do is make sure that you save it because you definitely do not want to lose your map that you just created. And then you're gonna have to switch the drawing mode to the event mode here at the top of your screen. Now it's gonna remove the tile set, which becomes unavailable. And you're also gonna be able to see some kind of a square grid. So what I want you to do with the square grid is right click exactly where you would like to start uh, inside the map so you will have a little menu that will appear 
go at the very bottom that says set starting position and click on player so now the player's starting position will become this exact place on this very map make sure that you save it then and now you can click on the little button over here that says play test which will launch your game inside test mode and that's it you are now able to walk around and play test your map okay so that's it for this week's video thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next week for a brand new rpg maker mz tutorial